Hey guys, so I uh, probably spoke a bit too fast uh, in my last video. Um, um, essentially, the uh, the pinball worked for a while. Uh, I did actually play it, and uh, I'm just gonna switch this off. And then it stopped working one uh, one day, um, as in like after two days or something like that. Anyway, um, so I mean, this was always gonna be a project, and uh, luckily I have all the schematics here. So I started just diagnosing. Uh, some of the stuff. So very often what happens is this um, this battery here goes bad and uh, needs to be replaced. So I replaced that and that didn't fix the issue. Um, and typically uh, all these boards, uh, well actually let me describe what these boards are. So we have a sound board here, auxiliary sound board, uh, power supplies, and there's a pot here uh, that actually regulates the 5 volt. Um, so I, I tinkered with that and there's a spot where the board doesn't boot uh, if it's too low and it then boots. So I, I actually uh, think about that and it works fine. And most of the board were fine, they actually booted. And the reason I know that is all this blinking. So anyway, all this blinking tells you that the boards are booting fine uh, for the most part. Now I'm not sure about this one, but if you play with the pot for a while, it actually, uh, I'm gonna have to look into that as well. So if I, there you go, if I lower uh, the voltage, it doesn't boot anymore. There you go, and now it's fine. And there's a spot where it's too high. You bring this back, um, this should be blinking. There you go. So I'm not entirely sure um, of what's going on, but there's one thing I, uh, I noticed. So essentially, um, the reason I, I realized this wasn't working is the, uh, the display here stopped working uh, and nothing started to respond. So um, first point is I actually just checked the voltages here on this guy. Um, and here we have, uh, what is it? It should be minus 112, that was fine. Minus 120, uh, minus 100, that was fine. And then here we have um, plus five on the, the middle one here. We have a 64 on the uh, this one and uh, plus 12 here. Um, I use the schematic, so that's what we have here. Uh, sorry, 62, uh, plus 12, five, minus 11 and minus uh, 10. And this is the board that we're and uh, what I, I noticed is that there was nothing on plus 12. Uh, so that's that's a good start. Um, <laughs> I realized something was wor wasn't working. So I traced... God, this is sliding here. Wow, it's in place. Uh, so I traced the uh, the uh, the cable to... Um, it, it comes out of... Sorry, it comes out of this one. Yeah. So it comes out of this one and that's where the voltage comes in. So what I did is I just used the schematics here just to trace it back. So we have here, um, it took me a while because I'm not familiar with these. Uh, and the more important thing with schematics is to actually spend time just looking at them, see where everything is. So with P1 here and P2. So P1 is where the voltage comes from. So I don't know if we can read it here, but I can clearly see P2 here written here. So the, this other one is P1, so uh, P2. So we're looking at pin four. And when I tested here, uh, pin four, there was no voltage coming out of this either. So I uh, started tracing it back to, it's coming out of uh, pin five on P1. So I just wanted to make sure that there was, um, instead of just diagnosing everything here, make sure that there's something coming out of here to start with, and there is. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you, but um, it's just a matter of testing the ground. The ground I can get from, you know, uh, apply the, the black to ground, can test it from here, that's a ground point. And then uh, pin 5 is this one here, and that red plus 20, uh, as it should. There you go. So, um, from there, I looked for D9, which is a diode, and I traced uh, DD9 uh, is this guy here, this little diode, and that tested fine. So essentially I just, uh, from ground to where it arrived, uh, this point here, and that tested fine. 
Uh, so from here, and then uh, you know, it has to find at the end of D9, so that's not a problem. But uh, the next one was R20, which is a resistor, and uh, it took me a while to look at R20. I was looking all here, but it's actually here. But you can see it's a slightly, slightly blackened, and sure enough, there's nothing at the uh, entry point. There's no voltage being registered at the entry point, so or the um, exit point. So. That means that this guy is gone bad and uh, clearly it just, uh, it probably just overheated and burnt a bit. Uh, looking at some of the other resistors, they don't do, look super healthy either, so uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know about this guy either. Uh, I might need to take a picture, I can't get close enough here to uh, check them out. So, um, I'm gonna have to pull this board out and uh, change at least this guy and see if there's anything else that needs changed and then uh, and see, see what happens from there. It is the joys of uh, of owning these uh, these old machines, you know. You, you gotta you gotta spend the time and uh, not be afraid to uh, dig into uh, uh, schematics. Uh, again, you know, I didn't know anything about it when I started. It's just a matter of of, of spending the time finding the uh, schematics. There's a lot of videos on the internet, so. But anyway, let's uh, let's start on that and then uh, see where that brings us. Actually, when uh, I was looking at the board, there's another thing that I noticed is that there is uh, some uh, considerable. Um, I'm trying to find a, a good angle here because the sun is shining on the window. Hold on. Um, yeah, there was some discoloration here where these. Uh, I think these are load capacitors. Um, that are connected to uh, to all these uh, uh, transistors, <clears throat> and essentially just to uh, send the load to the ground. But you can see there's some uh, some burning here at the uh, the connection between uh, here and here. So I tested the continuity between between these points, and uh, it's 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 fine. There's no problem there. Let's see if I can. Uh... Yep. Kind of hard uh, with one finger. There you go. And then the further down here. So there's no problem there of continuity between um, this component here and this one, which is so the two uh, resistors are here, and across here we have what's called this uh, Zener or Zener diode. Uh, there's also one here with this uh, uh, resistor here, and I tested this as well while I was. Uh, when I, I was at it uh, to see whether it was it was uh, broken in any way, and it's it's working fine. And the good thing with inner diode is you can test them in the other way. Normally, standard diodes only let current pass in one way, but this one uh, let current pass in uh, two ways and uh, with different voltages essentially. So it just prevents it helps prevent voltage peak when there's a, a return uh, voltage. Uh, but this one here. There's nothing happening. Um, so I think it's burnt. I think it's burnt and uh, uh, so we are gonna need to change that as well. Uh, which is fair enough. So while I'm at it, I'm gonna, I don't have any of these. Um, and these are uh, 12 volt xenodiodes. I have the reference for it. And I'm actually gonna change these two guys as well. well actually, probably just this one. But I'm gonna change this guy as well. All this, although, it seems to test okay, um, but uh, what does it test as? 4.5 uh, kilo ohms. It should actually be 4.7, I think, uh, if I look at the schematics. So, do you know what? We might need to change this guy. I think we've we definitely burned the Zener diode, and uh, this could do with a. Uh, a new, a new guy. So I'm not sure I was taking the voltage right for this one, but uh, if I, because there's nothing coming on the other end, but if I test the resistance, I do get, I do get. Hold on, come on, come on. I do get a reading of nothing right now, but uh, come on. Uh, I do get a reading eventually of 220 
ohms, which is what it should be. There you go, 0 0.2, um, 218, 0 0.218 kilo ohms, so that's 220 ohms, uh, which is fine. You know, there's a tolerance of 5% on these. So it should be, it should be, it looks like it's actually fine. But I'm still going to change the change it anyway because uh, I'm not getting any voltage at the uh, is it this this side of the uh, of the resistor going into the 12 volt. It should be 12 volt here. I'm not getting that. So I'm gonna. It it could be that this guy is fine, but it's actually coming from the voltage regulation here. Uh, this is the uh, sound part of the. Uh, this is the display controller, so this is the sound part, you can see uh, they're divided here. And the other one is the display part. Right, folks so I finally have an update um, on on this uh, pinball issue that I'm having so I've actually identified now at this stage that the actual issue is the uh, this board which is the um, the uh, CPU board uh, it's actually here um, if I show you maybe a diagram of the entire assembly um, is that the best one we have yeah so you have the uh, the main control board, which is the uh, the, the where the CPUs use are, um, and that's connected to pretty much everything else as you'd expect. So the display control board and the dot matrix here. Uh, so I've actually fixed the display control board uh, already. Uh, I got a replacement one as well, uh, just in case. And I know that the dot matrix now um, isn't uh, faulty. Um, and the, the way I was able to uh, to discover that was essentially somebody lent me another control board um, and then I was able to actually boot the game. So I know that <laughs> essentially my control board is bad. Uh, now since that, since then, I've actually got another replacement control board. So my pinball is booting and working. Uh, so I can actually focus on um, some of the coils that are gone bad and some cosmetic stuff. So the, the restore now has started <laughs> and the pinball is working. Uh, maybe I'll show you later on. But anyway, so this is my original one and I've done a couple of things. First, I've had a lot of time um, uh, today. <laughs> so I've actually socketed pretty much every ICs on this. Uh, I just have these three, but I know these are, these are okay. These wouldn't be the problem. But um, and I've socketed pretty much everything, including including the uh, CPU and the um, the RAM. The RAM was actually a Fujitsu RAM, and uh, I've had bad experience with a lot of Fujitsu ICs. They uh, they seem to have a high failure rate, mostly multiplexers, some of the LS, but I just thought it couldn't hurt to actually replace that anyway. And the uh, Fujitsu one wasn't to specs. Actually, the the one they recommend is exactly this one, the uh, 6264 LP10. That's actually what's recommended in the manual, uh, and the Fujitsu was an equivalent to that. Now, it came from the factory, so I'm assume it was okay, but I, w I wouldn't put it past it to have failed anyway. As I was replacing them, I discovered that this chip here, which is here, um, is, if I test it, faulty. It's supposed to be a, 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 a 138, and if I, if I um, force it to recognize 138, it tells me it's faulty. So this actually could be the uh, the reason. Um, and the reason I socketed these was actually to do exactly that. And I thought, do you know what? I know this doesn't work. Um, I don't have the test rig for it to actually test the pins. I, I don't have the <laughs> patience to actually just stand in front of the uh, the pinball with an IC probe and the manual to. Uh, and it's an awkward angle as well. So uh, I, I could make myself a test rig or in the same time I could just change these because this is my only pin. I'm not really gonna need a test rig for anything else. So I just thought 
Uh, I'll just change these few ICs. I have a very good uh, desolder gun. Uh, it won't take me too long. And uh, so that's what I've done. And so anyway, this guy is faulty. So I'm gonna order a new one. And fingers crossed, fingers crossed, this was my issue. Right, folks so this is my uh, the pinball now working now, interestingly um, when I got it and I got it working these lights weren't uh, working and I was told by the guy who uh, sold it to me that these uh, field lights weren't working but they're working now um, there's only a couple of lights that aren't working I can see uh, these guys here 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 um, I think that's all actually yeah the rest is working fine oh, that's so cool and um, yeah, there's one one lamp here that's actually probably needs to be replaced or touched up. But other than that, I mean, it's uh, it's working okay. So it's on free play right now, and I just want to show you. So I have a couple of um, a couple of uh, of these uh, the coils that aren't working. So let's start the game. Oh, it's probably going to ask me for yeah. I need to put the balls in. There you go, I need four balls and then before the ball uh, arrives here. So, so um, that's working fine, but this side isn't working at all. Um, actually, this guy was working uh, early on when I played it, but I, sh I, I, I know exactly why that's not working. The, uh, the crane here isn't moving, that should be moving from side to side. Uh, this guy isn't working, and oh, this coil isn't working now. Well, that's interesting, actually, he only worked once. That's not working anymore. Okay, so this is actually working whenever it wants. <laughs> but, um, so I need to fix that. So I have one, two coils to fix. Uh, find out what's happening with the crane. I've actually disconnected it since. And uh, there's a shaker in there as well that I've had to disconnect because it forces the, uh, the tilt whenever it shakes and it shakes a lot in this game so um, yeah this is working with like this and uh, so there you go so I'm actually gonna open it and show you what's underneath so to open these guys um, well I've taken the glass off but essentially uh, you can lift it uh, and let me <laughs> that was a bad idea. I actually need to take all the uh, all the balls off that first. So we'll do that. I'll get back to you. Okay, there you go. That is the underside of a pinball. So there's a, there's a lot of wiring. There's a lot of very very uh, confusing stuff in here. Um, and to be honest, I'm not 100%. Uh, completely familiar with it, but uh, this is all your power conversion stuff and fuse arrays and some more power stuff here, etc. etc. But here um, is our shaker motor, and it's actually just a motor that, sh that has an irregular kind of head and it just shakes the whole cab. Um, and I've, I've switched that off because uh, I, need, I need a way to actually tone it down I'm not sure exactly I didn't see anything from the manual but anyway and this is here our uh, our flipper coil um, and you can see here this is disconnected so I need to reconnect this uh, first um, and then I'll just resolder it so uh, the drop target coil is this guy I think yes um, so that's not working and I'm not sure why it actually worked once. So maybe, maybe we've stuck a uh, stuck a uh, okay, there's no contact in this contact now, so I don't know. Um, well, how's this one working? It's the same way. Focus. 
this is gonna be hard to do uh, oh this is way out of focus sorry about that so uh, here we have essentially when the ball hits the uh, contact this little uh, uh, leaf switch uh, makes contact and activates this coil and it activates this coil sometimes uh, although I need to check because maybe 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 uh, where is this going so I need to check trace these uh, where these wires are going there's a little diode across but I need to check where these wires are going uh, and then why isn't the coil working because the coil is working I actually got it to work once um, or twice by just touching it by accident so this guy isn't bad actually but there's something in the connectors that uh, or in uh, I need to find out what this guy is it looks like my wires are going to this guy they are white blue and they are yellow 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 blue white and yellow blue white yeah this is a three color system wiring system so I'm gonna have to um I'm gonna have to inspect where these wires are going and whether they're doing their job and what the return is uh, to this coil because it looks like the coil is working but the signal is getting uh, lost or corrupted somewhere and then we have uh, this guy here the flipper coil uh, so that looks like yeah I don't see anything but it doesn't mean nothing is wrong actually I see here with sort of a loose uh, loose wire here no it's not loose it's just uh, yeah it's not super hot either like <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna have to inspect that uh, and find a way to uh, dismantle it. Uh, looks like this is your yeah. So the coil, the coil sends the electrical uh, signal. So the electrical signal arrives here and pushes this or pulls this bar. So it creates a magnetic field inside. This is just a wires coiled around a around a tube essentially. Uh, when current, current is applied to it, this bar goes inside because it's magnetic and it brings, it pulls, yeah, it pulls this guy across. So these are clamped on this shaft and I bet you this is your, yeah, so if I, if I move the flipper itself, there you go. Um, so this is what happens. I'm not sure what this switch does why they need to have a switch so this is the same type of assembly actually I could have done it from here um, don't know what this does no way there is the need for it but obviously there is so it could be a number of things wrong on this uh, this assembly here uh, yeah I'm gonna have to, uh, gonna have to inspect this a lot more but you can see though the whole assembly plate that's quite a it's quite a lot of stuff just to move one so as you as you press the button this goes up and actually it's it's making contact and now it's not making contact this switch here I'm not sure what this is uh, this uh, I'll, uh, I might need to research anyway um starting to ramble and I'm uh, not doing much uh, productive here so I am going to start fixing these coils uh, I need to do some researching on uh, on the internet and then uh, I'll get back to you but first I'm gonna fix this guy uh, resolder this and uh, this fella here and uh, let's see what's next okay so a couple of things I've done uh, since the last video so Sure you will. So, um, I find out why this guy isn't working. Well, I, one of the reasons it's not working is that it blows a fuse, um, and uh, I'm not sure I have the right fuse. I tried. It should be a two amp fuse, 
I tried the 2.5 and it blows that, so that tells me there's probably something wrong with the uh, with the coil at some point in the circuit. Um, so I'll have to investigate that. It's pretty simple, actually. It's just uh, it's the uh, the this the. the uh, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, I, I identified the uh, the wire going from the uh, the ground wire, um, sorry, live wire going to the fuse, uh, going to the coil, and then it goes back out to the uh, the button here, so um, somewhere there something happened, so it's, it's probably a, a problem with the coil assembly, um, so I might to, well, I'm going to have to take that out and, uh, and test it or maybe get a new one. Uh, altogether, uh, this guy I fixed. Um, it was actually just a bad solder joint, again. So that's that's working now. Um, these lights are working again. There was a, a solder issue because um, I got them working and then they weren't working again, and it was just a, a loose solder point. So I resoldered that, um, and I've ordered a few things. So um, when I took this guy out uh, just to clean to clean this, it actually broke. Um, you can see this is actually slightly pitted and I'm gonna need to uh, darken it again but um, so that this guy broke I have it here somewhere there you go and it should be a, a long a long screw shaft here and that broke so I managed to, uh, to take the rest out from the other side uh, I put a temporary bolt in there doesn't look too bad actually I have to say but I, I've ordered uh, a couple of replacement parts um, these I've ordered a few more of these uh, caps because there should be one here um, actually this should be covered here um, and I have the parts I should probably put it back but it just uh, it, it keeps falling which way does it go it keeps falling every time I, uh, I put it back so um, I've taken it off for now there you go it should be here and there should be another of these uh, caps here so I've ordered, uh, I've actually ordered four, because I'm not sure they're 100% matching. I'll have spare ones if they break anyway. Um, they're not exactly expensive. And I've ordered more of these sort of um, pins, plugs, things uh, to hold them in place. And I'm missing a few here and there, you can see here. Um, I've ordered uh, some of these caps as well. There should be two here, there should be one here. Um, I think I'm missing a few somewhere else. So I've ordered a few of these as well, some cleaning product, and uh, that's it for now. So while I wait for them to arrive, um, really my next job should be actually to take out this guy, get it to work, and then we'll be left with just this uh, this crane assembly. This should be moving to uh, worry about. I've actually disconnected it, and I've disconnected the um, the uh, tilt switch as well because when the, uh, the shaker motor turns, it causes the tilt to engage, and I'm not sure how to, um, to adjust the motor uh, s speed. I'm not sure if you can. I'll have to have a look at the manual if there's anything in there. I'll have to have a look online, uh, but maybe use a, a smaller weight on the motor as opposed to this big wheel that um, is there. Because uh, that, that couldn't be right, you know, the, the motor, the shaker motor. Because that shakes a lot every time you engage one of these uh, events, which is essentially the, the core of the game. You have to um, engage them here, switch, it switches on an event, and then you have to get into one of the ramps that it tells you to go to. And every time you do that, it shakes, so it shakes quite a lot. And uh, you have to do that six times to unlock the dragon fight. And that's more or less the, uh, the game here. So. It shakes quite a lot, so I'm gonna have to um, adjust the uh, shaker. So other than that, um, after that, yeah, I'm, I need to order some uh, some more uh, rubbers because uh, these are there's, these are cracked. They are all actually uh, very uh, very much on their way out. So not a ton to do. Um, once I get all the parts, I suppose. <laughs> well, once I get it booting, and I've actually done the uh, mod as well uh, since the last uh, the last section of this video. I've done the mod, uh, replaced U11 on the uh, on the CPU PCB. So it start every time I started, I need to fiddle with the uh, with the power supply. It just starts properly. So there you go, some progress at last on this uh, this guy. So I suppose next time I do. Uh, an update video on this. I should have 
I should have fixed this and I should have uh, all the new parts and new caps so yeah, it will start looking nice and I, I need to order a rubber set. Hey guys, so it's probably time to catch up on uh, stuff I've done on this pinball since I, I got it to work. Um, so I started uh, obviously uh, fixing a few things, uh, pretty much everything is now working so um, this uh, flipper here wasn't working and it's because the, um, the so there's, there's a, a coil inside maybe I could show you it's gonna be tricky because there's balls in here but um, they're probably gonna slide down there you go so I'm going this way anyway this is the back of a pinball as you can see I've changed the LEDs as well I'm gonna switch on the light so it was this a switch here that was causing me problem uh, these are pretty much the same and as you can see here so okay, I'm gonna switch it off so I don't get shocked but um, when the current is applied on the, on on these here it engages the coil that actually brings this back uh, and that's what moves this is the uh, the axe for the uh, axle for the uh, the switch at the back on the other side, so for the flipper at the back, so the flipper moves and it activates this switch. So if you keep the button pressed, the coil uh, stays in position. And because, um, well, if you, if it stays like that, the amperage would actually rise and you'd blow fuse. Uh, so what happens is this switch actually uh, releases the coil that brings your uh, flipper together and engages another one that keeps it um, and uh, uh, keeps it. Um, in this position essentially so without this switch here your coil will either burn up or your fuse, fuse will blow and that's what happened on the other one the fuse kept blowing and that's because the uh, whenever that came up the switch wasn't releasing uh, it was actually stuck together so I just slightly bend the uh, the uh, the switch and that actually fixed it uh, what else was there um, yeah one of these uh, the, the the bumper here on this side uh, the bumper right here wasn't working uh, and it was actually just a loose uh, solder here and uh, what else was blowing a fuse with a couple of things it's quite noisy in here of all the games working uh, and running uh, what else wasn't working um, I cleaned the cab here I actually cleaned the uh, the uh, the uh, speaker because it's all rusted it's still pitted but at least it doesn't look as rusted as this guy I'm gonna have to probably clean this as well at some point um so what other fixes was there so the um gonna, there you go the um the motor still isn't quite working um so i've uh, placed it in this position here so what happens is uh, there's a there's a mode when you run this the guy over here that actually engages the, the motor and uh, you can trigger the release of the ball um with is, is it one of the switches here I think it's the right one um, so that it aligns here uh, with the hole and you can get the bonus uh, but I, I haven't sourced a motor for the price I'm willing to pay yet so <laughs> we'll have to see about that I've changed all the rubbers as well these are new clean rubbers um, everywhere uh, except over there because I'm waiting actually uh, for a few lights and I'll, I'll, I'll take off this whole part and actually at the back as well you have uh, lights that need to be uh, to be changed. I had a blown LED here that I changed. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I think that was it for functional uh, stuff. Uh, the flashers aren't working and that took me a while to actually source why. And this is going to fall again. Uh, to actually source one and I, I'm pretty sure now I found out who the culprit is it's this uh, uh, resistor here and actually it doesn't uh, doesn't look too bad but it's hard to tell they don't just blow they can they can just stop working but anyway um yeah I'm getting no no voltage across this and I've actually traced all the uh, the, the this cable back to here I'm getting voltage right here the connector uh, these actually arrive straight here and these go straight into the flashers um, which are where are they these are all actually uh, connected with uh, these type of connectors uh, here's one 
So here is one of the flashers here for this guy here. Uh, that's one of the flashers. So none of these are working. Uh, it tells me that actually the fact that none of them are working tells me that it's either a board issue, which I tested because uh, uh, I was able to trace uh, the other side of the flasher. Sorry, to uh, the board inside, and it wasn't. It wasn't that actually the uh, the pins uh, that drive. I'm not going to take this off, but the pins that drive the uh, relay uh, are actually uh, uh, toggling properly and the uh, the relays are actually uh, uh, still fine. So uh, I pr I'm pretty sure, pretty confident this is the uh, resistor because I'm getting no voltage across that. Um, and as you can see, I've changed all the... Um, inside uh, lights. Uh, last time waiting for the... Uh, these kind of general illumination these are still incandescent, but all of these are LEDs and what a difference it makes uh, Let me switch the light off to better appreciate, but it's super super bright um, Well, not too bright, but uh, it's it's just crisp, you know, these are really like really genuine colors uh, before that it was sort of this kind of kind of blue, but you know you you had really you really had to look like for the for the color uh, because these were just white bulbs underneath incandescent bulbs and uh, and shining through a, a, a blue colored glass now these are actually colored leds so you're just getting all that color uh, if you want to see the difference actually this one is still incandescent uh, it's kind of hard to see i suppose it's much striking actually uh, in real life than on the camera um, because the, the color is it's having a hard time just uh, adjusting to the colors but you can see here these are incandescent uh, and these are LED white uh, much crisper and trust me when I say this uh, I discovered that these were actually red and purple um, uh, you really couldn't see that uh, before so it's, it's quite beautiful I'm, I'm really happy with the result uh, I might change these guys and actually I've seen a few people do that to um, changing ones uh, these are rollover switches and uh, there's one here one here one here and I think that's it I might change them to um, uh, ones that change color like every second or so or something like that but just that kind of blend into the next color I've seen these and they actually look nice and helps um, differentiate them from these ones for example um, what else what else so I need to get a proper uh, I've ordered them so I'm expecting them any day now um, proper let's see if I can zoom in and, and there you go and these are still incandescent and I'm waiting for proper um, uh, LED, colored LED so I'm gonna use purple here uh, purple orange purple here and there's all these ones over there as well um, I'm gonna change into purple as well and there's all these flashers that need to work these flashers activate when you hit the bumpers so uh, I'm gonna change all this general illumination uh, field illumination uh, to better reflect the color scheme of the uh, of the pinball because as you can see like this is I mean it's alright but it's all that purple is sort of wasted and and forgotten and uh, I've seen examples of people who've done really nice jobs with uh, colored uh, uh, general illuminations um, there's more here you know they're actually everywhere and they're they're sort of lighting the field but not in the best way possible um, and I've seen it done it's, it looks beautiful so uh, I'm gonna try this but so far oh yeah and I fixed these lights as well so I'm reusing a a red one here it's a red transparent button and I'm using a red LED as well just to really get that red uh, that red light and uh, here I'm actually using uh, red as well for these as well actually um, and these weren't working so it's great to see them working so man I was uh, a few months ago or a few weeks ago I was uh, one step away from actually selling this pinball because uh, I couldn't get it to work couldn't figure out uh, what was wrong with the board oh yes and I also fixed the uh, the other board that was causing me grief so i got a replacement uh, driver board sorry cpu board a while back um and uh, uh this is the one that was in the cab before it's actually cool oh hey, gives me a great idea 
actually making a light box with an old uh, PCB would actually look uh, quite killer. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, that would make a very cool light box. Um, that might be another project. But anyway, so the the other board I got um, was working, but it had a, a Street Fighter. Um, um, Street Fighter uh, ROM which I've put here and I've actually changed now to the uh, I've burnt here instead of Street Fighter I've burnt uh, gladiators and I've socketed the uh, uh, battery on it because the battery on the other one was dead and uh, this one already had a socket but what I've done and uh, um, told you that already I've uh, socketed all these chips and I found out that this chip here was bad it was actually dodgy it wasn't working in my tester so i changed that and miraculously the board is now alive so i have a spare working board um but um yeah well you know I, it, it would have saved me money not having to find another one but at this stage i was just uh, i just wanted to get one that was working and, and make sure that you know it wasn't just this board before i spent more time on it so at least i have a spare if the other one, the one fails or if i get another uh, gottlieb system tree um, I quite like them actually and now that I'm more knowledgeable in these um, getting another one would make it you know would be a lot easier uh, to fix so at least, uh, at least I, have a, I have a spare CPU board and control board as well for this here and uh, that's the control board and these are the hardest one to find so um, so it's all good um, I'm gonna put this back in I'll do that later um, so there you go, that's where I'm at with this pinball. I'm waiting, as I said, any day now for general illumination. Uh, I've ordered a resistor to fix the the, uh, the flashers, and when I have that... Oh yes, and I've, uh, I've actually cleaned all the metal parts. These were actually badly, badly um, rusted and pitted, and uh, so all of these I've actually taken apart and... Uh, and uh, and cleaned uh, these as well this uh, this guy actually the post here is kind of uh, loose I can't get it to grip properly in the wood so I might have to put filler and re redrew the uh, re redrive the the hole for this post but uh, it actually doesn't cause any issues uh, the ball comes here and uh, it's still solid but in time I'll have to do that um, and uh, so I'm waiting for the resistors so the flashers uh, hopefully will work general illumination and once that's done um, we can put the glass back on and uh, and enjoy the pinball actually I've enjoyed it already I've also put uh, some LEDs in there um, I'm, I'm trying to um, I've ordered a few like blue for here some uh, some yellow and red um, red for the eyes as well I'll see what it, what it does uh, Illumination for the uh, for the back glass is uh, is tricky, and I've seen some pretty tacky stuff. So I'm hoping they're not too strong. I don't want it to really like have red coming, you know, through the glass. Uh, I'm quite happy with the way it looks already. Uh, so we'll see. But at least I'll have spare ones that I can use here. But uh, I just ordered them just to see what it looks looks like, and then if, if I'm happy with it. Uh, I might keep it, but uh, you can see like here it'll, it'll probably benefit with some blue or some um, some clear white uh, Here I'd like that to be a bit brighter white um, and then uh, I'd like to have matching colors for these guys because they're, they're actually uh, You can see it through but they actually flash and then uh, there's a few other flashers in there uh, I'd like the, uh, the the eyes to be red to really come out, but we'll see we'll see uh, We'll see how it comes out, uh, and I might not keep it. It'd be nice to have some, uh, maybe actually it'd be cool to have some uh, changing ones here, like fireball type of LEDs, but uh, I'll, I'll see in time. Uh, for now, I have a few um, white LEDs behind. You can see some areas that are a bit cooler than the other. Actually, in real life, it doesn't quite look like that. Yeah, this is probably, uh, let me arrange it. This is probably closer to what it, uh, in, it looks like in real life. Uh, which isn't bad. I mean, it looks pretty good, don't you say? Anyway, um, I'm gonna wait for the uh, general illumination LEDs and the uh, 
the resistor and uh, we'll finish this video then uh, with these and hopefully that'll be the end of uh, this restoration project it took quite a while quite a while uh, quite a lot of uh, effort and desperation because I just didn't know what I was doing but um, I got it working at the end so that's the main thing let's get back to work Hey guys, so I've taken off the uh, faulty resistor on the on this uh, pinball and you can see oh my god, it's completely burnt. Wow. Yeah. So we're going to replace this with uh, now these normally are 0 0.33 and I order it looks like it's brown brown and some yellow uh, and here I've ordered a 0 0.33 which uh, essentially should be orange orange silver um, I need to check what brown yellow is but it might have been one of the reasons the flashers didn't last they actually worked for a while when I got the pinball and then they, they died so that might be why although when I test this uh, which would read 0.33 ohms it actually registers on my uh, uh, voltmeter as 1.1 1.2 but it might be because um, it's not sensitive enough to uh, to register anything under one ohm uh, I'm not sure anyway we'll check I'm um, gonna put this in hopefully I won't blow anything there you go I've put the uh, Pinball in test mode, and you can see the flashers now are working. There should be three there as well. There you go, these are working. There's no bulb here. Oh, there is. Is there? Yeah, uh, maybe it's here then. Yeah, I am. Um, I haven't. Oh, do I? God, I gotta check. There's one that was missing a bulb. So it must be this one. Um, but other than that, the flashers are working. So, one last test is to actually. Just uh, start the game and see if the flashers are working properly. Yeah. <laughs> this is really cool. Awesome. This one should be flashing. Actually, there's another one there. I didn't know that. So, it's actually this one, yeah. There's no flasher here, and it's this one that isn't working. And then, uh, this one here should be... Actually, I'm not sure when it should be working, but it was working. So, this one isn't working, this one isn't working. Um, but it's because the bulbs are bad. This is awesome. Let's check this again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I have a couple of bulbs, but um, now I will need to order some LED flashers for these, um, which I haven't because uh, yet yeah, because I wasn't sure. So I'm still waiting for the general illumination bulbs, and then uh, maybe I'll order some LED flashers. And then uh, also some lights for the uh, different lights for the. Although, do I need these? Yeah, they're not actually very visible, the bumpers. I don't think I need the lights for these. Uh, but maybe I'll replace the lights at the back with some uh, 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 general illumination, glowing one, you know, the, 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 the ones that are diffuse, um, like on the field, and have kind of the purple area here. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Yes. Okay. Let's keep working on this. This is getting very close, lads. All right, folks, look at this <laughs> display. I'm going to try and focus on some of the light, but there's a lot of stuff going on. Wow. Let's see if I can uh, actually close the door here. Let's make things a bit better. Yeah, just about. 
Okay. <laughs> um, so I've used some general illumination lights. Uh, purple here. Um, you don't get these streaks, you know, in real life, and it actually looks. There you. Go, that's more closer to what it looks like. I'm gonna try and hide some of these. Uh, but um, as you can see, it just transformed the playfield entirely. Look at these. Look at this area. How stunning it is. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I'm gonna run out of a. <laughs> super loud. So uh, I I didn't have enough to actually. Um, uh, change these, this tree here, this one, two, three, this tree uh, here, I've actually put um, red here for the moment, uh, there's, uh, there's one here and one here, and there's another one that should go here that isn't working actually, I should fix that, uh, in fact I'll do that next, but um, wow, yeah it's not as bright in real life, uh, it's kind of hard to get the camera to focus. Maybe I can uh, reduce the uh, the luminosity. There you go. No, that doesn't work. Never mind. Uh, this is so crisp. Uh, oh yeah, I also have these lights. For now, I've put some uh, just white LEDs. Um, but I will also replace them for those uh, those purple ones. Um, and uh, you get beautiful reflection. Here I had, um, it's actually not as bright in real life, it's kind of hard to, um, it's kind of hard to capture properly. But here I had, maybe if I switch the light on, here I had, uh, you kind of lose that effect, but here I had orange ones, uh, just to match the orange here, um, it shows yellow on the camera, but it's actually orange same color as this for some reason it shows yellow uh, and the the purple and the orange sort of bled together and it, it started to look dirty so I've put back white and that complements the uh, the uh, purple um, perfectly and uh, wow I'm amazed at the effect this has on the camera um, what else have I done I've changed stuff on the uh, the, the uh, uh, box as well so I've put cold lights here just to properly display this like gladiator title and it really pops out. Um, I've put a mix of, uh, of orange and warm white here and mostly orange, some red and white here as well just to um, just for contrast. It's actually contrasting things pretty well. I've put some blue LEDs here. Um, I initially had some yellow here and you can actually see the flicker so I've put some bright um, uh, white of different values. So I had a, uh, sorry, I had a, a warm white, uh, a, a general illumination white, and uh, I think two bright, uh, uh, cold white, um, just to get a difference in the uh, in uh, in the illumination here. And I've put some red just glowing here, um, and it works quite well. I didn't overdo it. I actually put. I initially had put some. Uh, reds here for the light, the, there's actually lights behind the eyes uh, and put red everywhere and it was just sort of losing the, the green so I've actually put a red here, uh, a red here and a white here, you can actually see they're slightly different, there's a white here and a red here, um, just to contrast things a bit uh, and make the, some reds pop out but not all of them, I think it works, it works well, um, you can see here the uh, the, the the cold white is actually working well, and here even though I've, I have a mix of orange and cold white, it's actually mostly yellow, um, which I think works. I really I'm really happy with the result. I didn't want to overdo the uh, the colors, um, and I think I think it's all right. If I take out the, uh, I won't with one hand. It's gonna hurt. Um, there you go. Oh my God, this is. <laughs> this is crazy, uh, but it looks it actually looks stunning in real life. I'm gonna try and see if I can take a picture um, Anyway, um, yeah, I'll take a picture as best as I can. I've uh, I'll continue um, I need the back done essentially uh, so I need some uh, uh, I have some here some purple here and here and here uh, I need some here I need some here and I'd like to have something here as well and obviously over there, so it's gonna be a lot more pop purple yet, um, but that's okay. Uh, that's the goal. Anyway, let's get back to work. <laughs> 